They hired someone to pour in some acid as he fell asleep outside the house. Uju believes that if Inkem lost his sight, there is no way he could see any vision, let alone save the king. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a small Nigerian village, there lived a young prince called Inkem. Inkem was the first child born into a family of a Nigerian king with two wives. On the day Inkem was born, the villagers experienced a torrential rainfall that brought an end to their three-year-long drought. The men, women and children of the village jubilated at the first sign of rainfall and they praised the gods for blessing them with win again. But the birth of Inkem also brought about a tragedy in the village, the death of his mother, who was the king's first wife. After the death of Inoma, the king's second wife, Uju, took care of the baby Inkem. Ever since Inkem was born, the villagers experienced great peace and tranquility, and the years of famine came to an end. Uju also gave birth to her son, Emeka, shortly after Enkem was born and ever since then she has been looking for ways to get rid of Enkem and make her son the only heir to the throne. Enkem is gifted with the power to move things and make things happen. When Enkem screams in hunger, the heart will move and things would break. A lot of people who try to bully him end up regretting their actions. When Enkem is very happy, the village would experience peace and when he wished for rain, the weather would change within seconds and it would rain, even when the sun shines bright. Inkem started moving things when he was only five years old. With his power, he would defend the defenseless and save the people who needed saving. As he grew up, he made a great number of enemies, and the people would often whisper among themselves. They would call him names like wizard, evil, child of the devil, and so on. With time, Inkem tried as much as possible to conceal his power from the public. The absence of a mother figure in Inkem's life made life quite challenging for him. His stepmother, Uju, and her son, Emeka, are threatened by Inkem as the first son and heir to the throne. Since Uju's son, Emeka, would be the next heir to the throne if anything happens to Inkem, Uju began to hatch a plan to make her son the only heir to the throne. One day, she told her son Emeka to steal the king's crown and place it inside Inkem's bag to make him look like a thief. Inkem saw how the events occurred with his third eye. He switched the crown from his bag back to Emeka's bag as he stood at the window looking at Emeka. Emeka went to his mother to inform her that he had successfully placed the crown in Inkem's bag, not knowing that Emeka had switched it back. Hours later, the king began to search for his crown around the house, and after searching without success, he asked the guards to bring his kids and their bags. When the guards checked the kids' bags, they found the crown in Emeka's bag, and he was shocked. He pleaded with the king and confessed to stealing the crown. He also confessed that his mother asked him to steal the crown and put it in Emeka's bag. The king was very hungry, and he banished her and her son from the village. At this time, Inkem was 10 years old. As the guards took Emeka away, he casted a questioning look at his Inkem, but he smiled mischievously in return. When they got to the village brother, away from the guards, Emeka told his mother that Inkem must have switched the crown and he wondered how he was able to do that. His mother then explained to him that Inkem has always been a powerful child since he was born and she has done everything to get rid of him, from trying to poison him to taking him far away from the village when he was very little, but he always found his way back to the village. She also told Emeka that there was a time she paid a palace guard to kill Inkem in the forest, but Inkem returned to the palace unhurt. That day, he came to her and warned her severely to stop trying to kill him, or he would teach her a lesson she would never forget. It was at that moment that she decided to stop trying to kill Inkem. But now that they are banished from the village because of Inkem, she told Emeka that he must do everything to be taken back by the king and take the throne from the king. 
Five years later, Nkem's power has become more pronounced and he began to show it to people around him without any bother. His father, the king, is against witches and Nkem has seen how he has dealt with witches over the years. So he tried his best to hide his powers from the king and within the powerless walls. One day, Nkem was at the market when he saw a boy being dragged away by a running horse. He used his power to stop the horse and the people around were surprised. He quickly covered his face with his hoodie and ran off. He is scared that someone might recognize him and tell his father. The people whispered and wondered how a wizard could be in the village despite the punishment meted out on past witches and wizards. Another time, a man was trying to save his son who fell into a very deep well. People gathered around screaming and crying as father and son tried to get out of the well without success. Inkem got to the scene and used his power to bring them out. The people around were shocked and they ran off, calling Inkem a wizard. Inkem quickly ran off again, afraid such that someone might tell the king about his powers. The next day, Inkem was walking along a forest path when he was stopped by two men. The men told him that they saw him performing magic and they would inform the king about it. Inkem began to beg the man. He promised to do anything if they refused to tell the king about his magic. After begging them for hours, the man finally agreed with only on one condition. He asked to convince the king to accept Emeka and his mother back to the palace. Inkem told the men that he cannot promise them that because the king is a very stubborn man and a man of his words. He asked them for another condition, but the men insisted it had to be the same condition. He was given three days to do this, or he would report, be reported to the king. Inkem became confused and he did not know how to convince the king to bring Emeka and his mother back to the palace. A thought then occurred to him later that night. The next day, Inkem met the king and explained to him that Emeka is seriously ill and needs to be taken to a healer. The king was angry with him. He asked him why he was seeing Emeka after being banished from the village. But Inkem replied that he heard the news from the villagers and he thought of letting the king know. He begged the king to pardon Emeka and his mother and take them back. The king thought about it for a while and he agreed. Inkem was very happy. Later that day, he told the men that the king has agreed and he saw Emeka and his mother come out of a hut nearby. He was surprised. They told him that they've been in the village for days now when he kept staring at them. Emeka pretended to be really sick and he was taken to the palace. But before the king allowed them back to their rooms, he warned them not to engage in any shady deals that would make him angry again or he would throw them inside the prison for months before punishing them. Would you and her son Emeka apologized and promised to be at the best behavior now that they are back? Weeks passed and a Jew and her son pretended to have turned a new leaf. Until one day, Inkem was sitting beside the king, listening to his stories when Uju served the king's meal. Inkem looked at the food and found out it was poisoned. He wondered why his stepmother would want to poison the king, and it dawned on him that she wants her son to ascend the throne quickly, and the only way to achieve this is by killing the king and him. He poured the food away with his magic and quickly packed the plates. The king did not understand what just happened. He was angry as he came for being clumsy. He came apologized and quickly cleaned up the mess and went to dish another food from the pot for the king. Emeka and his mother watched from a distance, filled with rage. They wondered why Inkem would always be the stumbling block to achieving their wicked aim. Days later, Emeka and his mother began to hatch another plan. The boy decided to lure the king outside his room by midnight and hire someone to kill him before he goes back inside. Nkem could foresee the plans of his stepmother and her son and he decided to protect the king at all costs. He sat outside the house that night, waiting for the king to come outside the house. But Uju and her son did not carry out their plan that night. They decided to teach Nkem a lesson instead. That way, they could carry out their plans without any hindrance. They hired someone to pour in some acid. As he fell asleep outside the house, Uju believes that if Inkem lost his sight, there is no way he could see any vision, let alone save the king. As soon as he fell asleep, the man poured the acid in his eyes and body and he fled away.
Uju and Emeka also ran inside their rooms and pretended to be sleeping. Inkim screamed out loud and everyone, including the king, rushed outside. The people exclaimed and wondered what would have happened to Inkim. But his stepmother started screaming that Inkim is a wizard who wanted to arm the king. She lied that she saw him in the king's room before he came outside the house and screamed. She also told the king that Inkem has done more harm than good to the people around him and she has evidence. Would you ask the king to wait until morning and she would bring some witnesses to the palace? The king applied his soothing oil on Inkem's face and body as he screamed in pain. The next morning, Uju woke up very early. She had paid all the people who were present when Inkem used his power at the market and when he saved the drowning man and his son. They all corroborated Uju's story and accused Inkem of wizardry. Inkem was very disappointed that the people he helped could testify against him. The king asked Inkem if the people are telling the truth, but he began to cry. He tried to explain to the king that his life is in danger and was trying to save him when someone poured him acid. But the king shut him up and asked his guards to lock him up in the cell. The king was heartbroken that his first son and heir to the throne is a wizard. The king loved his dead first wife, Norma, so much that he thought of banishing a child and his first son seemed like he had not a crap. He thought of what to do for days, but he couldn't come up with anything. Uju tried her best to make him banish in Kim, but the king would snap at her and send her away in anger. When the king refused to do anything about in Kim, after seven days, Uju poisoned the king, and this time, in Kim was not there to stop him from eating the food. Uju ensured that no one saw her while she served the king, and she removed the plate of food as the king finished eating. Uju saw the lifeless body of the king, and she called her son to confirm if he's truly dead. The mother and son jumped up and hugged themselves, happy that their plan worked out this time. Then, they went out and began to scream for help, pretending that they only met the lifeless body of the king. Inkem felt the king's sudden demise, and he knew immediately that his stepmother and her son had gotten what they have always wanted, the death of the king. Would you summon the village elders and the king was confirmed dead? Ideally, when the king dies in the community, there would be a three-month mourning period before another king would ascend the throne. But after a few days of mourning, Uju began to pester the village elders to make her son ascend the throne as soon as possible. The elders explained that Inkem should be the next king, but Uju was hell-bent on making her son the new king as fast as possible. She explained to the elders that Inkem is a wizard and as such cannot be made the king. The elders did not know what to do. They told her that they would have to consult the oracle and appease the gods, but Uju's patience was running out. She bribed the village elders with yams, rice, beans, and other foodstuffs to make the process faster. And surprisingly, her son Emeka became the new king barely one month after his father's death. As soon as he became the king, Uju made all the rules for Emeka they increased the market's women tax and took over some people's land by force. Soon, the villagers began to grumble about the sudden changes taking place in the village. Uju deliberately left and came in the cell for three months, where he is fed only once every day. Our aim is to make him die inside the cell. But after six months of being starved and maltreated in the cell, Uju decided that it was time for Inkem to leave the village. He made us among the village elders and told them that it was time for Inkem to leave, and they all accepted. When Inkem was relieved to the banished, the people whom he helped avoided him like a plague because one side of his face and body was burnt from the acid poured on him that night he tried to save the king. The guards pushed him out of the village with a long stick and he was sent out never to set his foot on the village again. Inkem became an outcast, despised, by the same villagers he saved and protected. They believed he was cursed and shunned him at every turn. From the day Inkem set his food outside the village, a terrible drought struck the land and the villagers' crops began to wither and die. Inkem had decided not to set food in the village again, but the news of the misfortune that had befallen his village got to him 
and he decided to help the villagers. He went to the market square and using his powers, he summoned the rains, bringing life-giving water to the parched herd. But Emeka and his mother pretended like he did nothing and they never acknowledged him. The villagers rejoiced, but their gratitude was short-lived. Instead of thanking Enkem, they accused him of using dark magic to manipulate the weather. They refused to acknowledge his heroism and continued to treat him with contempt. He had to go back to being in exile. Heartbroken, he left the village and used his powers to create a beautiful garden in the forest where he lived surrounded by the beauty and wonder of nature. After months of extreme droughts, the villagers suffered from hunger and Uju and her son could no longer calm them because they had begun to revolt and demand for solutions. The people began to make demands for Inkem to be brought back to the village and made the king, but Uju threatened the villagers for demanding that a wizard become their king. The demand continued and the people continued to protest for days. Uju begins to hatch another plan and this time she is determined to take Inkem's life and make him disappear forever, just like his father. Days later, Inkem was taking a nap outside his hut when he heard some footsteps. He opened his eyes and found five palace guards walking towards him. He rubbed his palm on his face to be certain that his eyes were not deceiving him and he found out that indeed he was not dreaming. He got up immediately running away as the guards chased after him.